I hope you're well. Guess what we're going to be doing today? Yep, yeah, we're going to be cleaning out the big fish tank. Um, we may do the other two as well. See how we get on. This one's a 200 litre freshwater tank. It contains mainly angel fish. Um, you can see my big one there, Bumblebee, and all his pals. We actually lost a fish this week and I'm not sure why, so we're going to do a big water change. What makes a job possible and even enjoyable is my python system that I use for cleaning out this tank, which I shall be showing you. Okay, so the first thing I do when I'm cleaning my tank is clean down the glass on the inside and I use the magnet to do that. So here we go. Every time anyone goes near the tank, the fish think they're being fed. That's why they all come up to the surface. The glass had a good going over. Now what we're going to do, switch off all the electricity and get the piping set up. Very important to unplug all your electricity, to unplug your filters, your lights, everything. I've got it all in the same plug so it takes seconds to undo. And then under here we have this. This is what stops me having to fill up loads of buckets and backwards and forwards to the sink. This is the Python system. Um, I got mine on Amazon. Uh, it's not cheap. I think the main system was about £100 and then I bought different parts to go with it. Uh, but I use it every single time and I don't think I'd clean out the fish tank as often or as enthusiastically if I didn't have it. Um, again, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just showing you what I use, what I've discovered that I think's good. Okay, so um, I'll get this set up with the tap and show you how it works. So the main parts of the system are your hose and the connectors that come with the hose. This is, I think, is it a 30 meter one? I got a slightly longer one because, um, and I'm glad I did, because mine has to go all the way through to the kitchen tap. Now with it, I got this smaller siphon, but as you see, my tank's pretty deep. And so if I had this, it wouldn't to gravel back, I'd need to get my hand right in there. And I'm always putting hand creams on and stuff, and that's not what you want in your fish tank. I wear gloves, but disposable gloves, they, they go through them like you wouldn't believe. So I invested in the big boy. This big siphon goes all the way down, as you'll see in a minute, and takes away all that hassle. And it's just got, oops, connector on the other side. The other important parts, this one, which connects to your sink, to your tap, and this one, which is an optional extra, but I think it it's well worth having. Um, you can absolutely shoot water back into your tank using your gravel vac, but if you've got a hook, it literally just, oops, can you see that hooks on to the side? You go away, sit down, have a cup of tea while it's filling up again. Don't take your eyes off it though, very easily overflows. <laughs> right, so if we'll leave this till the end, we'll take this through to the kitchen. Hello, we're at the sink in the kitchen. This is where I use my um, pipe and where I connect it up to. So this is the tap. I think it's pretty standard. Um, the, this item is produced in America and they would have perhaps different taps and or faucets and different connections. So what you get with your python is you get one of these, which is a little adapter, a little brass adapter. And I actually had read up about it, so I bought one separately, not knowing that I got one with it. I don't know if everywhere that you buy them from gets, um, you get one with it, but we did. So I had to send the one I bought back, which was great. Um, so what you do is you take the little end of your tap off. That's kind of a little sieve thing that filters the end. 
you tip, take it off, and you've got your threading around the top here. So you get your brass adapter. And I forgot to mention as well, it comes with two inserts here, little washers, little cream coloured washers. So generally, um, I think for our country, you need just the second one. So you take the first one out. Um, but you can try, you might have a different tap, try different things. But I think the generally accepted rule for the UK is you just need the one on the inside. Okay, so thread it up, do your tap. Like this. Don't turn it too tight because it can be a bit of a sod to get off. <laughs> and then you've got this which is a bit of a clever kit. Um, you've got wording here. I don't know if you can read that. That says faucet and that says hose. So this one's going to connect to your tap and this one's going to connect to your hose. And this bit at the bottom's the clever bit. I think they call it a bell adapter or something. Anyway, when it's down, as you see, can you see it says drain along there? When it's open like that, the water will come out the bottom. And when it's closed, you sort of push it up and turn it, then the water will shoot back up through the hose, back into your tank. So, we'll put this onto the... Make sure this is on properly. There we go. So this bit just screws onto here. Like so. And what you can do to tighten it up is just turn it a quarter turn and that tightens up the brass adapter and it tightens up this green bit as well. So we're going to put it over the big sink like this and I'm going to get the hose. Okay, here we are. The hose is made, it's not like a garden hose, it's made of a really soft, flexible material, which is great because it doesn't tend to kink or get stuck on anything. I'd always try and wind it back up in sort of big loops so it's not um gonna get marks in it or bent bits or do you know what i mean um at first i wasn't sure how to store it under my fish tank without it getting kinks in it but i got the python porter which is the wrap that goes around it which i'll show you which again was an an additional expense but i i, I mean i use it every time it works well it looks like a simple bit of kit that you could make yourself, really, but it's it's worth having the real thing sometimes. So this part doesn't have the cream valve on it, which I'll show you at the other end. That's how you know this one's to go on the sink. So it goes on this bit here. Now, these bits turn independently, so you can screw it on and off, but mine's a bit stiff, so I just turn the hose. Let's see what's going on. So just turn the hose to screw it on. There we go. Make sure it's tight, but not too tight. Make sure your bell bit's open. And we shall nip through to the back to the fish tank so I can show you what happens with the other end. Remember I was talking about the end with the cream bit on it? This is a little valve that can make you stop the water flow or start it again, which is quite clever. So I'm going to take the end of my big gravel vac and screw this onto here. Again, not too tightly, just enough. Make sure your valve is open. And this will get popped into the tank, avoiding everybody. Now I'm going to turn the tap on. Okay, so your tap goes to the cold, which for me is towards me, and then you turn it on. Now, this creates a suction, which will start to empty your tank. Um, this is a controversial bit, really, because it does waste water. It's basically the water is going down here, down here and out. And while it's doing that, it's creating a vacuum, which takes 
the water out of your tank. Now, different people have said different things about this, like um, if you turn it on and get the suction started, it'll keep going. Um, but I live in Scotland. There's a lot of rain. Um, and it's only on for a limited amount of time and it's very effective. So I do tend to just go with it. But I can imagine if you were in a hotter climate with more problems with your water supply, it might not be the best idea. I don't know, just throwing it out there. Um, so what we do, oops, make sure it's on cold. Turn it on and things start to get noisy. Oops. Right, the minute that goes on, the suction begins and you'll be able to hear it at the other end. The dirt comes out, it's really satisfying. You can see the dirt coming up through the tube in big clouds. It's uh, mainly fish poo, non-eaten fish food, things that can rot and cause ammonia in your tank. So it's always good to give your gravel a good vacuum. Can you see the clouds going up through the through the actual tube there. And this is what we do. Keep doing this. You can work in a grid pattern so that you don't miss any of the gravel, but you can normally see where it's been disturbed. My fishes always get very interested in this because they think the little bits of poo going up the tube are actually food. So they try and peck at the tube. So you've got to be careful. I've never sucked anyone up yet. You can put a soft um, mesh sieve at the other end so they don't go down the sink um, if you think that's going to happen. But I think if you're just careful, you'll be fine. Right, I'll carry on with this and I'll show you a couple of close-ups so you can see all the poo going up the tube. Okay, so here's the filter and here's my bucket of water. So I need a sponge. I keep sponges specifically for the tanks so they don't go near anything else, any domestic cleaning products. Um, look at that, it's disgusting. Pop it into the water. I've got two of those filters, which I'll show you in a minute. And this bit in the middle, which has got the sort of biomedia stuff in it. So that will go in there as well. I'm just going to give the outside a bit of a scrub because it's a haven for algae. It gets really filthy. Inside. Get it as clean as you can just by using old um, water that you've just taken out of the tank. So you retain all the good bacteria, but by manual sort of scrubbing, <laughs> you get rid of all the gunky algae and things that will go on the side of your filter and stop it working so well. There we go. So this. <laughs> is one of these sponges. 
that there's one either side. So I'm just going to depress the sides. It can be a bit fiddly when it's being a bit fiddly. Just trying to take it out. But it's gunky today. It's not been that long since I did it, honestly. There we go. So the wee end bit comes off that can be given away. You've got poof, horrible sponge and you've got this layer of um, carbon which counteracts all sorts in the water. So give them a wee rub in water and get rid of all the gunk that's on them. The water is just about black already. It's really disgusting. You can see that again. Ooh. Right, giving it a wee squish. Again, clean the outside. Make sure there's not any gunk sticking to the inside of your filter housing. There we go, that's pretty much done that one. Um, once you think you've done the best you can, you put it all back together. I replaced these. Um, I don't know, maybe say every three months. Um, and I don't replace everything at the same time because by doing that, you do, you can have an algae bloom because you're not got all your yep because you've not got um, all your good bacteria there to help pop but they do look horrible pretty quickly um, but there we go it's a lot less gunky we fish around in the murky water for the base and then this part is done Can't, it doesn't work effectively as a filter if it's all jammed up with the gunk. Put this to one side and I'll get the next one. Oh, we'll get this. This is the biomedia stuff that's in the middle and I'd replace this now and again, but generally they don't degrade. They don't seem to go down in the, you know, they don't break down or anything like that. They just seem to stay for quite a long time. So. Um, I've only really replaced them once since I got the tank and I got this tank in December, so six months ago, January, February, April, May, June, seven months ago. So I'm just shaking it in the water to get the gunk off the actual bits and pellets. Just giving it a good old rinse and giving it a wipe on the outside. Because otherwise in that they look fine. At the bottom of this section, if you've got this kind of filter, is the bit that goes into the rotor, so that needs to be very clean. There we go. That bit's done. And the final bit is the other gunky, spongy one on the other side. So, Squeeze in the water. The more fish you've got, the more mess that is made. Um, so you need to really keep on top of it because that's the water that they're living in. Um, that's why I do it every week because it retains the good bacteria, but it does get rid of all the, the waste that they're swimming around in which can be toxic for them. There we go, so that's been given a good old rinse. I think the next thing, oh, I need to wipe that down. The next thing to be um, changed will be these carbon uh, pads. I mean, I should really keep a note of what I changed when because they have been changed before. And they do, their default look is disgusting. So, the next prize. Put that back in there. The sponges come up alright. They're always discoloured from the first time you use them, but um, they tend to get rid of any slimy stuff they're hanging on to quite nicely. So 
I'm just going to make sure the body is as clean as it can be and then I'll slip everything back in and show you the motor and the rotor. The rotor rotor, if you will. Um, I always have a sponge to use for these jobs. I also have several different brushes that can get into all the nooks and crannies which are helpful. Um, So, open it up, get these bits back down the sides. I forget which way to go. This one's all right. Goes there. And this one goes in. Oh, who is that? No. Stand up and have a look at the rotor. Keep me sponge with me. And also these are very cheap on the internet, very handy if you can get hold of them. They're just little bottle brushes and these are really good for getting into all the, the rotor bits of the filter. Here's the filter and here's the little rotor motor at the bottom. You see how it looks and it slots onto the base of the actual filter. I'm just going to give it a wee clean using the same water that we took out of the tank, which by now is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely brown. I'll show you in a wee minute. Okay, so let's give it a wee clean around. And then this is quite fiddly, but I'm going to take the rotor out. It's held in by a magnet and it comes out like that. So the space in there is where it goes and that will need to be cleaned a bit as well. So I'll get my little bottle brushes. And because this is attached to the electrics, I'm not going to plunge it into the bucket of water. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a clean like this. See the dirt coming off it? It's really nice, but we like pop this back right here for a sec. And then we're going to take this bit and we're going to clean it as well. I will put this into the water and give it a wee scrub. There we go. It's had a wee scrub. Click it better. We'll pop it back in and the magnet will just make it click into place. You see? So, our main body of our filter is here. We'll put this base back on the right way round. Clips into place like that. So that's that done. Now we take this opportunity while the back is clear to clean the back of the tank. Just, I normally take a sponge. Same one that I was using right there clean in and around the housing up where the filter goes because gunk sort of builds up there in the back of the glass because you can't really do that with the magnetic glass cleaner because it's got no space at the back. And the water I can feel is getting colder. So it's about time to fill it up again in a minute once we get our filter back in. And there's the other filter, but we'll leave it just now for today because you don't want to disrupt too much at the same time. You can take out your heater, give that a wee wipe down. Check the settings on it if you think it's running too high or too low. Or your fishes. This one's actually fine. It's, it went up a wee bit high recently, but I don't think it's... Uh... So it's in the right setting. This is the housing for it, which is a little bit gunky. It might give that a wee rinse. It's made out of glass, you've got to be careful with these heaters. You see that's well gunky, that'll get a bit, a bit better. Pop it back in. You can um, take out all your different decorations and give them a wipe down as well if you like, if you think they're really disgusting. But I don't tend to mess with them too much. I tend to leave them there pretty much. 
you just wipe anything that looks ridiculously disgusting. Sometimes replace some plants because if I put plant food in the tank, it tends to make algae go mental. So I kind of stopped doing that. The plants, they tend to just do the same regardless, to be honest. Um, so we'll put this back in. If this filter, it goes six foot an angle down into the housing and then clips back. You sometimes have to have, there we go, a couple of goes at it. Just readjust these wee bits to make the, yeah. the filter flow come out the middle section. That's it, and that's that, really. I just wipe the glass down with the water from the tank and no chemicals at all, and then wipe over it with some kitchen roll. And that keeps it clean, same as the top area. But now we're going to take away all this funky water Ooh. Ooh. and uh, we're going to um, put in some clean fresh stuff back in the Okay, we're nearly at the top. This is where we're going to turn our little nozzle. Stop the water flow. There's a wee water line inside that I can see that. There we go. And we reached it. There we are. Switch this off. Now quickly, get it back to the kitchen. So what we're going to do now is switch on the electrics. So the filters will go back on, kick into life. And uh, so will the aerator and the heater. With this tank, it's got a very clever light system that's run by an app on my phone. So if I don't, after you've switched it off, it won't come back on until you reset it very quickly on the app, which is good because like, the fishes don't want their lights on straight away after a clean out. They need to settle in and they need the water needs to mix and they need to feel comfortable again. So we'll let them do that just now. Hi there. Right, I'm here on the floor the hose pipe and I've got it the kind of good way. I've drained all the water out of it by putting the bell bit at the bottom of the um, tap attachment down and that keeps the siphon going till it drains. So I've got it now. I want to make it into a smaller hose than this, but this and I do it on the floor. I just kind of loop it round on the floor. It actually might be easier. And the hose has got a natural way to go, so you just kind of follow that natural way in a tighter sort of... It's almost like being a cowboy with a lasso. Basically, you just want it to follow its natural way of going round. You want it small enough so it can fit in your storage area, but not in any way kinked or you know, bend it at a funny angle so it's going to stay like that. There we go. And you want it completely drained of water because you're now going to store it for about a week. So you don't want water, still water sitting in it. So there we go. Just round until you get to the end. There we are. Because this, as I say, was about £100. So you don't want it to degrade or get damaged when it's been stored. So I've got it done now. I've got my pipe and porter um, upside down. There we are. And this is just going to go around the hose. Lift it up so you can see. To hold it together. And also to allow you to carry it with ease. Oops, there we go. 
So you could now hang that up from somewhere if you had a hook that you kept it on or, um, I don't know, anywhere that you put it. It will stay all together. Um, I put it under the in the cupboard under my fish tank and it just slots in there nicely. So I'll go and do that now. Okay, we're back at the sink. We took off our hook, off our hose. Our cleaning implements are clean and we just unscrew this part from the tap. Where we shape, don't forget to put this bit back on your tap, otherwise it'll be very hard to control. I've also got this cleaning implement from before. Um, and our bucket, which will rinse out. So that's the big fish tank cleaned. Um, I'll show some photos of it afterwards once the fish have settled down and we've got the lights back on so you can see if they're happy or not. And uh, if you look at another video now, the next one will be about cleaning the two smaller fish tanks. Thanks very much. Bye bye.